I'm Brianna Bosch, and I own Blossom and Branch Farm. As a fifth-generation farmer, I've learned a lot about different methods and techniques in farming and gardening, and I'm here to share with you the ones that we've found to work the best. Welcome to the farm. So last year, I started way too many sweet peas. I think I had like 500 or something to that nature, which doesn't seem like that many, but when you consider how much work it is to keep up with sweet peas, it was way too many. And then I ended up like kind of, I don't know, I let them go because it was just too much work to keep up with like trimming them and pruning them and cutting them. So this year we're doing way less. We're doing like, I think 125, which is way more manageable. All right, we are getting ready to tree sprout our sweet peas with my sweet pea. <laughs> mm, and we're pre-sprouting our sweet peas. I always do this with my sweet peas just because it helps me to know which seeds are viable and to know which ones are actually going to germinate. Uh, sweet peas have a pretty good germination rate, especially if you've saved your own seeds. But we just like to know because they take up a lot of room when it comes to seed starting. They need a pretty big container. So I don't like to start any that are not going to grow. All we're doing is we have gotten a wet paper towel and it's pretty wet, right Kaisa? Mm-hmm. How wet do you think this is, would you say? Like, like, uh, as wet as the ocean. So we're going to go ahead and cover the paper towel with another wet paper towel. We're going to put it into a dark place. Uh, sweet peas need dark for germination, so we're going to actually wrap it up, put it into a dark spot, and then we're going to keep it on every couple days and see if they've started to germinate. Once they've started to germinate, then we're going to put them into dirt and start growing them in the greenhouse. All right, so I like to wrap uh, this up in foil just because it helps keep it in a dark place and it also helps retain the moisture. We are gonna be opening it up every couple days to check on it. So we wanna make sure we catch them before they start growing really, really long. We're just gonna put this into a dark place around 60 degrees, 70 degrees to germinate. When they first sprout, they'll just have one. This is the initial tap root coming out. And then after that comes out what will become the stem. So once they have two sides, is when I kind of consider them pre-sprouted. Um, and then we're gonna use these and we're gonna pop these right into our two inch soil blocks. All right, back in the greenhouse. We are going to put these guys into soil blocks. So first we have to make the blocks. We have our big two inch blocks ready to go. And I have my mix already ready. If you want to learn about our mix, uh, we have another video with our recipe. And we use a peat free soil blocking recipe. So I'm just going to add the water. Because I do this all the time, I'm just going to eyeball it. If you're a beginning soil blocker, you might want to measure this out. The reason I like to put sweet peas into soil blocks, um, and the reason we like to use soil blocks a lot here at the farm in general, is because. Uh, sweet peas hate root disturbance, so root disturbance is basically when you jiggle the roots around a lot or you move them a lot or break them up a little bit as you're planting them. So in general, a typical like seed tray where you're having to wiggle them out or like even a pot like this, we are having to kind of disturb the roots a lot to get them out is just not ideal. So that's why we do it this way. We've got our tree. Pop out some soil blocks. Finally have our full tray of blocks made. This has made this tray I can fit, I think it's 48 of uh, the two inch soil blocks. And I'm gonna go ahead and pop my pre-sprouted sweet peas in here yeah, and drop it right in. I've used the two inch blocks with the black insert that looks like this. Um, and I did that because the sweet peas like to be a little bit deeper when they are first growing. And so I like to use a little insert just because it helps. I like to use that little insert because it helps make a nice deep uh, position for these peas to go in. So we've got these all pre-sprouted. So what's nice about the pre-sprout process is some of these ones that haven't sprouted, um, I'm not gonna be wasting space 
in my germination tray, my growing space, with peas that were not going to sprout in the first place. So by doing that pre-sprouting process, we know that these guys are viable and they're going to grow and I'm not wasting space. So we're going to take a little bit of dirt and we're going to just fill in boop, right on top of each little block with some of our soil blocking mixture. Add it down lightly. So again, guys, if you're thinking about growing sweet peas, um, start them early, grow them cold, grow them super bright. So bright, bright sun, not in a super warm environment. So a warm greenhouse is actually not great for these guys. They kind of want to be hovering right around freezing. Um, daytime winter temperatures in the 40s are great. So um, don't grow them too warm because they're going to get really leggy and they're not going to be healthy. And don't overgrow. So it can be really tempting when we're starting sweet peas because we're doing this whole pre-sprout process to pre-sprout and then you get a whole bunch that pre-sprout and then you feel like you have to plant them all. Um, don't go overboard because they are a fair amount of maintenance <laughs> during the growing season. Um, just keeping them deadheaded so that they don't go to seed, keeping them fertilized, they like a lot of water, um, but really it's the deadheading that takes up a lot of time with sweet peas. So if you are not sure what you wanna do with them, then just don't do too many, you know. You'll get really overwhelmed, trust me. I know, <laughs> I've been there. I had super overwhelmed with way too many sweet peas. And I like had a breakdown in the middle of the field and I like just hacked all of my sweet peas down. And then I just sat there and cried. <laughs> I was so overwhelmed with sweet pea maintenance. So just to tell you, they are a lot of work. Okay, once we get all these guys covered, I'm just gonna water them in real quick. These blocks are already pretty wet, so I don't wanna make them really that, that much more wet. I just want this topsoil to settle in a little bit. So we'll just hit them real quick. Ta-da. Okay, so we are in the greenhouse. We have our sweet peas have uh, popped up and out of the soil and they are growing. So our next step is going to be to put them in a really, really sunny spot in a spot that is actually pretty cold. So you don't really want to be growing out your sweet peas in your house because they're going to get super tall and leggy and then when you plant them out, they're going to be really unhappy. So just trust me, don't grow them inside. A bright sunny spot, even outside, is fine. These guys are fine with temperatures down to 25 degrees at night. It's okay if they get a little frost damage. That's going to give them what we call a natural pinch. So normally people will recommend that you pinch off the tops of your sweet peas, causing them to branch down lower. If you actually let them get really cold, they will frost pinch themselves and then you don't have to do it. They're going to grow a lot of roots beneath the soil level. And they're not going to be super, super dense up above. They're not going to get really tall. They're going to stay kind of short, bushy and a lot of that root growth is what we're going for. So we're gonna plant them in March, so for us around St. Patrick's Day. And again, they're fine down to 25 degrees, so we will only cover them if it's gonna get below that and if we're not gonna get snow. If we get snow, leave them uncovered, they will be insulated by the snow and they'll pop out of that snow totally perfectly happy and cheerful and beautiful little sweet peas. All right, guys, I hope this helps you uh, with your sweet pea starting, and I hope that you feel empowered to grow them. They're really not that hard, uh, as long as you kind of follow that really bright, cold growing situation and then get them in really early. All right, y'all, if you like this video, please subscribe down below so that you can stay updated with all of our seed starting greenhouse fun and during the season flower growing. Sweet peas, grow some or don't. Or just grow a few. Ah, whatever you want. Okay, see you later.